So now we begin to look into chapter uh, number 4. So the chapter number 4 is entitled Magnetic Field, Transformer and Motors. Okay, so uh, as we can see, we'll start with Magnetic Field. So basically, uh, if we uh, overview a bit all the chapters uh, that we've been looking until now, uh, what happened was, uh, the first part was uh, on um, circuits analysis. And then once we've done with circuit analysis, with uh, where the only components are passive component uh, of a resistor, and then uh, the next chapters uh, we get into more components where we have introduced the components of uh, capacitor and inductor, where the notion of capacitance and inductance have been introduced. And now in the next steps in this chapter number four, what we're doing is we're going to introduce. Uh, uh, another notion uh, that is very attached to electric uh, electrical uh, engineering, which is a magnetic field. So basically, magnetic field is an uh, magnetic field in, in in electrical electronic engineering is very important, where most uh, uh, some of the huge application involve magnetic field. So uh, the main in electrical, the main application of magnetic field. Uh, magnetic field can see it as consequences of electricity um, and uh, the application that involved in, in magnetic field are uh, the first one the, the biggest one in, in, in the electricity supply is of course uh, transformers right and then so transformers and then the next one which is also huge is, is, is basically the the application of actuators so creating movement or transforming, uh, converting energy from electrical energy into uh, mechanical energy. So that involves magnetic field. So this chapter is about magnetic field, and then we look into uh, two, two uh, typical application of magnetic field, which is uh, very very important, which is transformer and motors, right? So we'll begin uh, right now with magnetic field first. Okay, so uh, magnetic field. I think we all have. Uh, uh, some notion of magnetic field or magnetic flux for example we have learned this uh, since we are in in high school basically i'm sorry so we have learned that um if we have a a, a straight conductors right let's imagine it's a copper wire or, or a copper bar where a current circulates in that copper bar uh, following for example this direction what happened is the currents uh, that, that circulates in this uh, particular wire or bar will produce a magnetic field surrounding the surrounding the uh, the bar or the wires right and the direction of the uh, magnetic flux is uh, following what we call a uh, right hand rules right so this is what we call right hand rules so if we have a current in in this direction then the magnetic flux will circulate in this direction following your your thumb uh, i mean if the current follows your direction of your thumbs and then uh, the magnetic flux will follow the direction of your of your other fingers right so uh, and the magnitude of magnetic field so this uh, i think everyone got it uh, so now how about the, the 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 magnitude of magnetic field so before before we go into uh, the magnitude the equation of the magnitude of the magnetic field we have to understand what magnetic field is. So magnetic field is basically, in other words, is also called, is also known as the density of magnetic flux. So d phi um, over s, or phi over s, right? So it's how much magnetic field, uh, how much magnetic flux. So phi is magnetic flux. Do we have per uh, per surface area, right? So how many magnetic flux do we have per surface area that's what we call magnetic field and uh, magnetic field the strength of magnetic magnetic field can be calculated using this formula which is mu zero multiplied by i over two pi r so uh, mu zero what is mu zero i is basically the current uh, uh, the current that circulates in 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 in, in that particular wire uh, two pi r so r is the radius or here is noted uh, noted as a the radius uh, where you want to me to measure the the, dense, uh, the magnetic field. So for example, here is measured uh, in this area, and then uh, mu zero. Then uh, so this is a, a quantity that 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 we might not be familiar with. So mu zero is basically what we call uh, as permeability of free space. 
Okay, now we're using permeability of free space because the magnetic flux is now uh, circulating in free space, in air basically. So this is the permeability of air or, or free, free space. What does permeability represent? Permeability represent um, how easy uh, does a magnetic flux uh, conducted in that particular uh, media, uh, medium, right? So for example, for air, the value is 4 pi multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7. So it means it has a, a very low permeability. It means magnetic flux doesn't conduct um, easily in, 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 in the medium of free space or air. But for example, if you have uh, an iron core make, that is made of iron, an iron has a much, much larger, much, much bigger mu, right? A much bigger mu. It means that, uh, for example, uh, an iron core would conduct magnetic fields better. So if it conducts magnetic field better, what will happen if you will have a larger density of magnetic flux? So magnetic flux density, d phi over ds will be larger uh, if we have mu zero uh, higher. And of course, we see here if we have higher current, then we have more magnetic uh, field as well, and it can also be played with two pi r. So the, if r is smaller, I mean, if we get closer to the to the uh, to the to the copper bar or the wire, we'll see a, a, a more intense magnetic field as well. So that's what, in in brief, what magnetic field is. All right. Okay. Now. Um, once we're talking about magnetic field in, in electricity, the thing that's interest that why, why we are interested in magnetic field is because uh, basically using current and using uh, conductors, we can create what we call electromagnet. So what is electromagnet? Electromagnet is basically it consists of um, uh, of of a coil uh, of um, a conductor that has been winding wind winded uh, in the form of a coil or a solenoid where we pass through it a certain value of current then uh, as we can see just now if we have if we have a straight wire what happen is if the current circulates in certain direction then we have a magnetic flux circulate in 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 in, in a certain direction using right hand rules so it's the same thing but now if 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 we if we coil the conductors what happen we'll see that uh, now the magnetic flux is in this uh, form right when it is in this form, there is a direction where the magnetic flux uh, come out and there's another direction where uh, another point where the magnetic flux, flux comes in. So now it becomes just like a, a, somehow it becomes like a magnet, right? So that's what we call an electromagnet. So we have a point where, uh, where we have two points where there are difference of magnetic potential. So it becomes just like a magnet with north pole here and south pole over here, right? So that's why in electricity we are interested in magnetic field because it naturally creates this magnetic field when uh, it is uh, arranged in certain form, for example, in this kind of solenoid. And then we can see here uh, the difference here is that so uh, if you look at the text, the magnetic field strength of a wire coil uh, increase in direct proportion of number of turns. So if you increase the number of turns then uh, you'll increase the, the magnetic field, uh, magnetic flux density, so magnetic field, right? B, which is equal to d phi over ds. And then um, another thing is that, uh, another thing that might influence it is not just the number of coil, number of turn of coil, but it's also the introduction of a certain material inside the coil. For example here, if it is just air, all right, so it's what we call air cord uh, solenoid or air cord uh, inductor. So this is this is basically an inductor. We see that the magnetic flux are uh, are not as intense as the magnetic flux are not as many as the magnetic flux that we see here. So these lines, this line is what we call magnetic flux. It represents the flux, right? The flux uh, of magnetic flux. And then uh, B is basically the density of this magnetic flux. So how how many how many magnetic flux can I get in a certain surface area? So for example, here for air cord uh, solenoid or air cord inductor, you can see there's a lot of magnetic flux in a surface area. Whereas if you, we look at the same amount of area in an air cord 
uh, with air core or no material inside the solenoid, inside the inductor, then there are less magnetic flux. So B here is larger than the B here. So B uh, being representing uh, representing the magnetic uh, field, right? So now that we have seen what uh, magnetic field is, so we're going to look at the first application, which is the which is the transformer, right? So um, the thing that you need to pay attention is that a transformer is an application of magnetic field, but it is uh, for the first time we're looking into uh, an alternating current application, AC, right? Because uh, in previous chapters, we have been treating only uh, direct current, but now uh, a transformer only works in alternating current. We'll see later why it works only in alternating current. So. Uh, as for introduction, what is a transformer? A transformer is an AC device that is used to change uh, high voltage, uh, low current AC into low voltage, high current AC, or vice versa, or vice versa, right? So uh, without changing the frequency. So imagine uh, you have an AC uh, supply, AC supply with a certain frequency. So you'll have uh, you have in one part, let's say we call it as input, we have a high voltage at low um, current and then we want to change it into an output of low voltage but high current. So that's that's when we use a transformer. But the, the frequency will maintain in both input and output. They'll be exactly the same, right? So if we can see here, it's high voltage, low current. Uh, it's high voltage, low current, uh, transform into low voltage, high current. So we, 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 what we, what we're doing is basically the, 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 the amount of power that has been uh, transmitted are the same. The input power and the output power are the same. It's just like that we, we're changing um, the voltage that was high has now become low. And uh, the current that was low previously in input will become high current. Right? So it works just like a mechanical transmission, a gearings, where you transmit the same amount of power, but at the, at the input, you will have high speed but low torque. And when you transform it in using a, a, a gear train, you transform it into a low speed but high torque. So it works exactly, uh, I would say, analogously like a gear train. Uh, but now it's not a speed and torque not rotational speed and torque, instead it is voltage and, and current, right? So in brief, it transfers electric power from one circuit to another circuit, from input circuit to an output circuit. It does it without changing the frequency, so the frequency at input will be equal to the frequency at output. It maintains as constant. And then it accomplishes this by electromagnetic induction, so this is a uh, the key word here, it, it, it use uh, induction to, to, to transmit the energy from, from the input circuit to the output circuit, right? And then uh, what we have is basically we have two electric circles, circuits that are separated. So we have uh, one input circuit, we have one output circuit, they are separated, but uh, they influence each other by, by, uh, by induction mutual induction right so uh, that's a uh, transformer uh, so uh, <clears throat> in now we've said just now that uh, the transformers works by using uh, what we call uh, induction so what is induction induction I'll to 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 to, to have a look at it uh, with a clearer view I'll put in the link of the video, um, a video explaining what induction is, what uh, magnetic induction is. But in brief, what induction is basically is a, a behavior that is uh, based on Faraday's law. So in Faraday's law, law, what does it say? It says that we will have uh, an electromotive force, EMF. So electromotive force is basically a, a potential difference or voltage. We'll create a voltage or an EMF will create an, an, an EMF across uh, an inductor, across a circuit, right? Across an inductor. So basically, transformers is just two inductors, one in input, another one in output. 
it says that we'll create a certain voltage, uh, a certain EMF uh, across the inductor when we'll create it, when we will we'll create this uh, voltage or EMF when we have a variation of magnetic flux. So remember, so V is the magnetic flux. So basically, if if we, we, we do remember about solenoid just now, in a solenoid we have a magnetic flux that looks like this. Basically, if we have a constant current, the magnetic flux will maintain just like this. But when there is a change in the current, so basically we get current into the solenoid and there is a magnetic flux around it. But if we have a, a, a variation of current, then we'll also create a variation of magnetic flux because the flux is basically the consequence of the current circulating in the, in the inductor, in the coil. And Faraday's law says if we have dV over dt or variation of magnetic flux, if we have variation of magnetic flux, then we'll create across the inductor a certain EMF. A certain voltage, right? a certain voltage, and it, that voltage is, will be proportional to the number of coil uh, that we have in this inductor. So basically, there's there's n coil, n turns of coils in this inductor. The EMF or the voltage will be proportional to the number of turns of the coil, and it's also proportional to dV over dt the variation of magnetic flux how do we have the variation of magnetic flux the variation of magnetic flux will only happen when we have variation of current di over dt and when do we have variation of current we only have variation of current when we have an ac current right because if you have ac current as a function of time we can see that the current keeps on changing there is a variation uh, sinusoidally of course here yeah. so when there is variation in ac current of, of voltage we will see that there is variation of magnetic flux therefore there will be creation of of voltages on the output right so e uh, or epsilon is emf n is number of turns uh, phi b is the magnetic flux uh, in in wb in weber right Okay, so uh, here in this uh, slide now, what we can see is what, what what's actually happening in the transformer. We have two circuits, separate circuits. So this first part on the left-hand side is what we call a primary circuit or primary coil. And here on the right-hand side is the secondary part, or we call it a secondary coil. We can consider, for example, usually the primary coil as I'm sorry as the input I'll erase this and we can consider secondary coil as the output circuit and in between what we have is uh, in between well first uh, in the input circuit and the output circuit what we have are basically coils or inductors right? coils or inductors and this is this coil basically creates magnetic flux so the line that you're seeing here is basically the magnetic flux. It is supplied with AC. So the flux will be a, a flux that, that varies as a function of that AC current. right? And then uh, this flux is basically channeled into the second circuit. The first circuit is the input. Why do we call it input? Because the power supply is situated in the in the first circuit in the primary coil but when we look into the second circuit now we don't have uh, an AC supply we don't have a power supply anymore what we have is actually a load so that's why we might also call it as output it's the part that consume the power that's coming from the AC supply in the primary coil in the primary circuit so what happened here is basically the flux is created by uh, the primary circuit and then the flux is channeled to circulate inside the coil of the secondary circuit using an iron core. So 
as the explanation in the, in the second slide just now, we say that uh, if you have iron, then the permeability or the mu will be high, so we will conduct magnetic flux better. So all the magnetic flux created by this coil will not be uh, circulating in the air, but all are channeled in the core, and all of them will get into, all the magnetic field will get into uh, the inside of the secondary coil. So once it get inside the secondary coil, this coil will also see the variation of d phi over dt, variation of magnetic flux. And just now we say that when in, in Faraday's law, it says that we will create a certain EMF, a certain voltage. So this is the EMF in volts. We will create a certain EMF, which is proportional to the number of turns Right, so now the number of turns of the coil multiplied by d phi over dt. So now you will have an output voltage Vs that will be now connected to a load that will consume the power. Right? So in input we have the input voltage called Vp or primary voltage Vp and here we have secondary or output voltage called Vs. So that's induction theory applied to transformers to transmit energy from uh, the first or uh, primary primary circuit into the secondary circuit right. so now in these slides basically we we, uh, we will summarize the principle of operation I've explained it uh, I've, explained, I've explained everything in the previous slide but now um, to summarize so what happened is first um, so here we have P the primary circuit and S where we have the secondary circuit and here we have a soft core limit uh, soft iron laminated core where the magnetic flux will be transmitted from will be circulating uh, from the primary into the secondary right so when current in the primary coil uh, changes being alternating so when the primary current being uh, being alternating a changing magnetic field is produced so the flux here will experience a variation changing magnetic field is produced this changing magnetic fields get associated with the secondary through the soft iron core so it circulates into the second iron core hence magnetic flux link with the secondary core changes so the magnetic flux here is the same as the magnetic flux here so it also experiences changes which then induce an EMF in the secondary right so if we have uh, a voltage here an AC voltage so VP primary voltage then we will we will observe an EMF which also we can call as secondary voltage so where, where does uh, where do we use transformers? So transformers are used largely in transmission of electricity. The first one is serve as impedance matching. Right? Uh, you might search what what impedance matching is. It's, it's a, a bit long to, to explain this. Second one it uh, it serve as electrical isolation. What does it mean serve as electrical isolation? It serves as electrical isolation because uh, so basically here you um, if I redraw it so you have a core and then you have the primary coil and secondary coil basically this is the input circuit and this is the output circuit right so you have your load over here so basically there's two circuit so this is circuit one this is circuit two and they are not directly connected right so that's what we call serve as electrical isolation so anything that, that happens to one circuit uh, will not necessarily affect the second circuit. If, for example, we have a high DC uh, short circuit, it will, it will not affect the, the second circuit. And then it also serves as basically uh, mainly as AC power transmission. So it serves as step up or step down transformers. Step up, step down transformers mean it serves to to, 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 to increase your voltage or decrease your voltage and by consequence uh, uh, to decrease your current or increase your current vice versa right 
to be able to do calculation for a transformer what we need is uh, a transformer electrical models right so an electrical model that represent the transformer electrically that will allow us certain calculation so usually uh, to begin with we, we, we will consider that the transformer is ideal an ideal transformer so how does an ideal transformer look like the first thing is we will represent the transformer itself so transformer is basically two coils and in between there is a, an iron core for example and the two coils on the primary part so this part we will call it primary part and this part we will call it as secondary part it has a NP number of turns in primary and NS uh, number of turn in secondary so the number of turn of the coils and in VP we will have uh, the current and the voltage at primary called IP and VP whereas at secondary we will call the voltage uh, and current as VS and IS right so that's that's a very simplistic ideal uh, transformer electrical model now that we have the model the ideal model of a transformer the thing that uh, we are most interested uh, in to, to calculate is what we call a turn ratio so what is turn ratio turn ratio is is this quantity it is defined as the number of turns of the primary uh, winding of primary circuit divided by the number of turn of the secondary circuit np over ns and it is also equals to uh, vp over vs and uh, by by consequence uh, the other way around is equals to is over ip so this is what we call a the turn ratio right the turn ratio so remember the turn ratio is the number of turn np over ns or it is vp over vs so for just for you to remember to, to not be confused just just remember of one np over ns equals to vp over vs and by consequence because the 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 power that is transmitted is 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 constant so vp over vs will be equals to is over ip but remembering this one is is, is largely sufficient so a remark that we can say is if a is smaller than one uh, a smaller than one means that np uh, np is smaller than ns or vp this also mean vp is smaller than vs it means our input voltage is smaller than the output voltage so that's what we call a step up so the, the input voltage is smaller and we increase it to a higher voltage so that's why we call it step up and uh, so therefore uh, the, 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 the opposite of it is when we have A larger than 1 that means we have NP larger than NS or that also means that we have VP larger than VS so the primary voltage input voltage is larger than the output voltage so that's what we call step down so the notion of stepping up or stepping down is really on so you have to pay attention and be careful the notion of stepping up or stepping down it's uh, set on on voltage and not on current right so that's why it's easier to to just remember about this this particular correlation and then remember as we change np uh, as we change the the voltage uh, the voltages and the currents the frequency will remain constant that means that if the frequency remain constant then the voltage and current angles voltage and current angles are not affected so uh, so in in basically in ac current if we if we plot uh, voltage and a current so imagine if if the voltage is in in red and then if we have a cut the current in blue with a certain uh, a certain phase shift the phase shift theta p and theta s so imagine this is vp and ip so the phase shift this is what we call a theta right for example here is theta p theta p the phase shift of v theta p will be equal to theta theta s because the frequency is constant frequency is constant so we'll not be treating about the phase shift theta p or theta s the most important thing is is just here so np over ns equals to vp over vs and and identifying whether we have a step up or step down transformers right 
and in a transformers the thing that we need to know as well is that if we had previously uh, what we had previously was an ideal transformer right in your ideal transformers there's no notion of losses there's no notion of losses what we had was if we do remember we have a core and then we have NP later we have NS and then it's just connected to so basically we have VP voltage input and then IP over here therefore in uh, here we'll have a load where we have VS and IS right and the constant frequency we can we can see that there are no uh, losses whatsoever so ever so the power that's been transmitted or the power that is, that has been uh, then transmitted by VP and IP are all uh, captured by IS and VS so that there are no losses but in reality so in reality the the, the, the more accurate model would need an integration uh, of losses if you want to create a more accurate model the calculation in in transformer we have to integrate losses so what are the losses transformers have losses and these losses basically if you want to do a more accurate model it has to be taken into consideration so all the power so vp multiplied by ip of course is when we calculate the power in in we'll see later it's not just vp and ip because we're not in dc current so it's vp ip cosinus uh a certain number that we'll see later because it is AC current we'll see that uh, not all the power are transmitted as VS IS multiplied by a certain number that I'll explain later because there are losses what are the losses there are three major losses the first one is what we call copper losses so copper losses is basically in these conductors in all conductors basically there's a, a certain amount of resistance right and as current goes across this resistance uh, a certain energy will be a certain amount of power will be transformed into into heat so that's what we call copper losses and we calculate it by r i square or i square r so that's what we call copper losses or joule losses so everywhere you have circulation of current you would have copper losses the second one is leakage flux losses so what is leakage flux losses Leakage flux losses, if we go back into the model of uh, the magnetic model, right? We have an iron core and then we have the coils over here. And we say that all the magnetic flux created in the primary coil will all go into the iron core and circulate all into the, into, into the secondary coil. But that is not the reality. Uh, in a more accurate model, what happens is in, in, uh, there are several leakage around the coils. There are leakage around the edges. Sometimes there are flux that leaks around the edges of the cores that will lead to, lead to a certain losses. Not all the magnetic energy in the primary will be transported into the secondary uh, coil. So that's what we call leakage flux losses. And then the other thing is the final, the, the, the last losses that we have to consider is what we call core losses. So what is core losses? Leakage flux losses is a magnetic losses. Core losses is also uh, somehow a magnetic losses. It's an electromagnetic losses. And the, uh, there are two parts of core losses. The first one is what we call eddy current losses. And second one is what we call hysteresis losses. Eddy current losses is basically when you have, remember that we say, we will create a certain voltage or a certain EMF when you have variation of flux dV over dt, right? And we have to remember that iron core, this is an iron core, iron is also a conductive material, material, right? And the iron can also see the variation of flux dV over dt. When they see the variation of flux, it means there are certain uh, amount of voltage that is created inside the core as well not just seen by the, the secondary coil but inside the coil when there is voltage created inside the coil what happened inside the iron core we know that we, if you have voltage and you have a certain value of a resistance you will create current right u equals to ri so there will be current a small amount of current circulating interlamination interlamination between the lamination of your core so that's what we call eddy current losses. This current that is created by dV over dt 
inside the core is what we call eddy currents. So that's the, the, a small amount of currents, a small amount of energy will be losses, but will be lost by creating these eddy currents uh, and transform into eddy currents. Right. So that's another another loss. And then the last one is hysteresis losses. Hysteresis losses is related to the characteristic of the material of the the core of the iron core. Uh, basically, when we cycle, uh, when we we pass through it uh, a sinusoidal current, what happens is not all the energy is, uh, some of energy is absorbed and stored uh, inside the inside the material. And when we go from positive to negative, there are certain amount of material that is lost inside the, uh, there are certain amount of energy that is lost inside the uh, inside the material. So that's what hysteresis loss is. But basically, 90% of the, we could say that 90% of the losses, major losses are copper losses, and the other 10%, which are minority, the minor losses, is caused to is caused by leakage flux losses, core loss, and core losses. Right. So a more accurate model would need would need uh, this integration or the integration of all these three losses. So how do we integrate that losses? So here are the losses basically. So if what you can see here, here is in red are uh, the integration of the copper losses. Right. So this now in these squares are the losses. The red one is the copper losses. Yeah. RP is how do we account for these losses? We account these losses by integrating a resistance. So this resistance is the resistance of the wires. So resistance of the wires. And we, we represent the resistance as RP. Right? So they exist both in the primary RP and in secondary. In secondary, we write it as RS. And then secondly is the leakage flux losses. So the leakage flux losses is basically a losses uh, we, we represent it by uh, LP in, in, in primary, LS in, in secondary. But now it's not a resistance, it's an inductor. Because inductor will consume uh, uh, magnetic uh, energy, right? Uh, reactive energy, what we call basically is what we call reactive energy. So uh, the consumption of that reactive energy uh, is represented by consumption of a small inductor called LP and ls and then the core losses so as, as i just just said just now core losses is created inside the core so basically uh in the primary uh, before we goes into the the coils we create a, a circuit representing the losses in the core and losses in the core of course there's one rc basically is equivalent to a uh, copper losses but now it's not a copper losses it's a losses by eddy current so it's the eddy current losses and then we have a hysteresis, hysteresis losses represented by uh, JXM. So XM is um, is what we call a reactance. So it's uh, an amount of ma magnetic energy as well that is consumed by these hysteresis losses. So this is the integration or a more uh, realistic transformers model where we integrate all the losses into the model, right? And now regarding the types of transformers, basically in, in, in a larger family, there, there are two types two types of transformers. The first one is what we call auto transformers. So auto transformers are, uh, are very small, small transformers that's used to change the desirable voltage by only a small amount. For example, changing from 120 volts to 130 volts. So when I say small, it's not small in terms of dimensional sizes. It's small in terms of stepping up uh, the, the, the voltage. So for example, from 120 to 130 volts, what they have is this kind of uh, auto transformers. It, it is uh, not basically uh, two separated. Uh, so basically, they, 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 they are connected. The circuits are connected. They are not two separated circuits. So we have basically the input uh, VL uh, here. Uh, which uh, we have called previously as VP and VH uh, so here is the input and VH as the output where previously we have called it in in, in a normal transformer as VS right so for a small uh, variation of, of, of stepping up voltage we can use this kind of configuration what we, which we call auto transformers so they also have two coils uh, one coils uh, at the at the terminals of the input voltage is called as NC, number of coil NC, and then 
uh, we have uh, another coils here uh, some sort of is not really secondary because the secondary is the combination of both the another uh, addition calls is NSE and it creates a certain voltage of VSE but at the output really what we're measuring is or what we're taking out is the, 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 the total voltage uh, the sum of VSE plus uh, VP uh, VSE plus VL right okay so that's auto transformers for for a small amount of, of stepping up and then the second one is uh, the thing that we have so this is the second type, a three-phase transformers. The thing that we have in, in our power line transmission. So basically when we have three-phase transformers, as we can see uh, in, previous, uh, in, in, in previous slides, what we have been modeling is just one phase. When we have only one uh, VP and one VS, right? One NP and one NS, but now we, we have to multiply it by three, three phase. In order to do so, there's two ways either we by having three different cores so for example this is for phase number one so this is for phase number two and this is for phase number three so we have np1 np2 np3 uh, at the input of the three uh, iron core and at the output we have the three phases uh, voltage output ns1 ns2 ns and ns3 that will give us the the output voltage of vs uh, one vs2 vs3 right or else what we can also do is uh, a three-phase transformer that are wounded on a single uh, core. So it's a single three-legged core. So we have uh, one leg here, second leg here, and the third leg here. So basically you have, for example, uh, NS1 here, NS2 here, and, and NS3 here, the secondary or the output. And the input is on the top of the schematic. You have NNP1, NNP2, and NNP3. And each leg represents one phase. Phase 1, phase 2, and phase 3. Right? So, uh, the three phase transformers can be constructed in, in, in these two different ways. So, the first one here, the second one here. And the three windings are wrapped around uh, the number one. Uh, the three phase bank consists of three single phase transformers. So they are separated. Or the, the second one here, the three windings are wrapped around a common core, a sing, what we call a, three, uh, uh, a single three legged core. Right? And for the three phase transformers, basically, uh, what happened is uh, we'll have a different connection. Uh, between the, the the primary and the secondary the primary because they are there are two uh, different circuits they can be connected uh, differently in in a three phase uh, in a three phase circuit basically there's two type of connection it's what we call a delta connection or y connection so more details on the on this can be looked into the into uh, chapters or title uh, uh, treating the uh, the AC circuit analysis so the, the the two connections are delta and y right so you can have for example the primary connected and delta and the secondary connected in y so basically here uh, here is delta y or you can have the primary the p connected in delta and uh, uh, the, the secondary also connected in delta or the last one connected, uh, the primary connected in Y and the secondary connected in Delta. And in terms of efficiency, so efficiency noted as uh, eta, so this is the Greek letter eta. Uh, I read it, so it's like this eta. Efficiency eta is the ratio of the power out to the power in, so it's a uh, power at the output divided by the power at the input so this is what we call efficiency so the, the efficiency of, of a transformer of course depends on the the losses the more losses you have then the the the, the, the smaller will be the output power right so if the output power for for a certain input power if the output power is small then you will get an efficiency a lower efficiency if you get uh, if you don't have any losses in the ideal transformer then uh, the output power and the input power will be equal then your efficiency will be maximum at one or in percentage at 100 right? percent so how do we calculate this power so uh, previously uh, 
uh, I have said that we will see it in uh, later. So now we'll see it. So power input is calculated as because it is an AC circuit. It's not just VP multiplied by IP, but we have also to integrate uh, the fact that there is the phase shift between the current and the voltage. It's not just VP IP. It's VP IP multiplied by cosinus uh, theta P. So theta P is the phase shift. So again, uh, the phase shift, what is the phase shift? Phase shift is basically the, the, the lag or the difference between the current and the voltage. So if you have the curve or current of current in red and the curve of voltage in blue, so basically, so imagine uh, the two current have a certain lag. This lag is called, uh, I'm sorry, phi, uh, theta. It's called theta S, right? So theta S or theta P. And you said that as the frequency are equals theta s, uh, the theta, the phase shift in primary or in secondary are exactly the same. We can see that here p out is v s i s multiplied by also cos sinus theta s, but theta s and theta p are exactly the same thing. Right? They'll be equal. So p in 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 ideal uh, transformers, in the case of an ideal transformers, you'd have P in equals to P out and you have VPIP cos theta P equals to VSIS cos theta S that would be 100% but of course that is not the case if we can do measurement what will happen is that uh, the P out this P out would certainly be smaller than P in so I think that's all for for for, for, for the part of transformers and the next session we'll look into the second application of magnetic field which is DC motor. Yes, before we end the, the, the topic on, on transformers, I would like to make a small note on what we call a voltage regulation. Okay, voltage regulation is basically the ability of a system to provide near constant voltage to keep the voltage constant uh, over a wide range of load conditions it means uh, for example imagine our we just we'll just look at the secondary part of our transformers right secondary part is connected to to a load right so uh, what we call voltage regulation is the capacity of so at the load at the level of load we have the voltage vs right so uh, voltage regulation vr is basically the capacity of the the component uh, in this case the transformers to keep its vs constant uh, regardless the value of load so for example if there is no load if there is no load there will be a certain value of vs let's say we call it as uh, vs uh, uh, no load so it's basically represented here as vnl vnl as voltage no load so it's vs and nl but when you put uh, a maximum load or full load now it has become vs fl or here is written as vfl Okay, in an ideal, uh, in an ideal transformer, so in an ideal transformers, ideal transformers mean there is no losses in the lines, there are no leakage in the coil, there are no uh, losses in in the core, so the voltage at 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 no load, so when there is no load or at, when the voltage uh, when the load is at full load, the voltage should be equal. It means V and L will be equals to VFL, no load, equals to uh, full load, which leads to a voltage regulation of 0%. So that's, that's the ideal case. So the voltage is always uh, constant regardless the value of, of your load. But in reality, of course, uh, the, 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 the VR is not 0%. It's not an ideal transformer. We have a certain value of resistance here. We have... A certain inductance here uh, represent the leakage, and in the in, uh, so in, in the in the secondary part alone, what will happen is that there'll be a certain amount of current uh, that needs that that is consumed by the by the losses by the copper losses. So uh, when there are there are resistances, what will happen is that there will be a drop of voltage, a drop of potential. When there will be a drop of potential, it means uh, Vs here uh, have to drop as well when there is load, right? So Vs, v, uh, Vfl in reality will not, uh, in, in a more accurate case, Vfl will be lower than V 
and L, right? So there's a small percentage here. So V F L would be lower than V and L. So uh, that's that's in the case of um, of a more accurate and not so ideal uh, transformers.